Um, I'm a lifestyle coach of over, with over 25 years of practical experience. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. Um, welcome to my food church. I'm here today with two very special guests. So I've got Tag, who's a free man. Mm -hmm. And he is one of the developers and founders of freesteading.com, which is a free studying community. Um, I've also got Miss Emily Penton. She's the developer of the Inner Clarity System here. And we are talking today um, about natural law. Emily and I have been going over this for the past uh, couple of weeks before the holiday break, and we're back. I'd like to just kind of do a quick little recap, and then we'd like to have any of you out there who want to join the conversation, join us, uh, talk to us, ask us questions, you know, any of those kind of things. So Emily and I have been talking about natural law, like what is natural law? One of the things that I'd like to remind everybody is that um, the natural law that we speak of, this law, it doesn't require, like your belief is not um, relevant in this case. Natural law is something that is just happening all the time. Um, it is immutable. It, it, you know, like I said, your belief in it does not matter. That, you know, since the beginning of time, we have been um, manipulated, you know, with, you know, people, what, what, what's happened is that there has been a knowledge differential, which has created a power differential. Um, you know, people often say, who are these people, like the people in charge or Mr. Global or whatever you want to call it? I mean, there are many, there's fewer, fewer of them and more of us. That's what we know. Who are they exactly? I don't know that that even matters. I think what matters is that there has been a knowledge differential. There has been, you know, ancient knowledge that has been hidden. Um, and there's this right now, like what in the world's going on? What is going on in the world? Like the thing that's happening in the world is that there's a battle to control human consciousness. And I don't know if anybody, you know, I don't know how much everybody knows or doesn't know. So we're just going to, you know, start from the very beginning with like a, a basic recap is that, you know, this, this occulted knowledge, which occult means to hide hidden, hidden knowledge specifically um, has is affecting humanity because, you know, um, that's how they're basically controlling our consciousness. I mean, I don't know how many of you realize that, you know, what we think is what we create. The things that we think about are the things that we care about and the things that we put our energy towards. And then that is what we create, right? Like if you decide, you know, I want to go to New York and you're in Florida, then you will make a plan. You have thought of it. It was an idea. It was a thought. Now you're just putting it into action, right? You're thinking like, what am I going to do to make this happen for me to be able to go to New York? And then you'll start walking towards New York or driving or flying or something. And now you've manifested yourself in New York, right? So your thoughts become things. You think of something and then you decide if you want to do something about it or not. And then you put your energy towards that. And then you go in that direction. And then now you or wherever that is. That also is like, you know, if you decide I need to fence my yard, now you've manifested a fence around your yard. I think you guys get what I'm saying with this, right? Your thoughts become things. So you get an idea and then you take, then you start thinking about that idea. Then you start putting it together, right? So this is what we're talking about. This is a natural law. This is the natural progression of things. You already know this because this is what you do. I'm not telling you something you don't know. I'm not, I didn't create this. Emily didn't come up with it. Tag, we didn't create this. This is our creator created this. This is an infinite intelligence. And I'm shining a light on this because it's always been my thing here at the food church to shine a light on truth. I tell everybody, I have a big sign in here and it just says, you know, nothing but the truth. And, and so all I'm doing all the time is like trying to shine a light on truth because I want you to be in, in full power of yourself. 
I just want you to be in full power doing what you want to do the way that you want to do it. As long as it's not causing any harm, of course, you know, like that is the rule. The rule is, you know, do whatever you want to do, create whatever you want to create. No harm can be, you know, you not if you're trying to, you know, cause harm. As long as you're not causing any harm to yourself or to anyone else, just not just it's fine. It's totally that's what you that's what we're here for. We are here to create. We're here to procreate and to create. That is all. That is our work. OK, so I don't think a lot of people know this. I didn't know it. You know, I did not know it. I was I was kind of asleep to these truths. Um, I think that Emily and Tad can probably attest to, you know, that themselves, but I'll let them tell their story. But basically, Emily and I were trying to bring everybody's attention to this, you know, talk about uh, human consciousness. Um, and we talked about, you know, the level of um, consciousness, you know, how conscious, like there's people with higher consciousness and people with lower consciousness. And that is based on the frequency the, the how frequently they are aligned with the truth. And the truth, this is another kind of sticky uh, topic because, you know, people will argue with me that the truth is, you know, only from and of Jesus or whoever, whatever their religious beliefs are. I just want to go back again and, and say, this is not about your beliefs. This is not about what you believe. This is, this does not require your belief. Um, Natural law does not require you to believe it like gravity. Thank goodness doesn't require your understanding or your belief in it. It, it. it just is. Gravity is just happening for us all the time. And it is, it just is. And so natural law just is. And this um, battle for, you know, consciousness this, there's a, there's a race to control our consciousness, our thoughts, because, you know, I'll, I'll give you another example of, of this. Like we lost a child. People who know my story know that we've lost a child. It's really easy for me to, you know, go back, remember the suffering of my daughter. And I could put myself right back into hell if I want to right now, if I just start thinking about that. But, you know, that isn't what I want to think about. I want to think about what I'm going to do going forward. I want to think about what I've learned from this experience. I want to think about how we're not going to let this happen to any other children, how we're going to make things better for everybody else. How are we not going to repeat this? That's that's what I want to do. Right. So I just don't allow myself to sit in that for too long. In the same way, there is this thing called television or movies, and there is a lot of fantasy in this box. And that box is showing you fantasy to provoke and promote emotions, emotions that you might not know are so powerful that you're feeding an energy that is working against us. You're, you're working, you know, counterintuitively against yourself. A lot of this might just be a little bit too much. I don't know. It might be a little too much. Is it too much, Emily and Tag? No, I actually 100% agree with you. And okay. it starts at an early age where pro you said fantasy. I would have used the word programming, but I can I can speak Neethi. We're good. Brainwashing. <laughs> I'm 100% about the mind control. But, you know, when you are being mind controlled, then you're not going to admit that you're being mind controlled because, you know, no, really? I do what you I want to know. Right. Emily? Yeah, just because you don't know you're mind controlled. So how can you admit that? If you admit that you're mind controlled, then you're not mind controlled anymore. Right. This is what we want. This is called knowledge. So what we want is to give everyone the knowledge that there has been some truth that has been hidden. And because that truth was hidden, you were being manipulated as we all were. And we would like for you to realize this. So if we reveal the truth, if we reveal the truth, there's no more tricks. There's no more tricks. No one can trick you if you have the knowledge of the truth. So, you know, and it's not my truth. It's not the truth of my belief system or something like that. This is just the truth. How do I know it's just the truth? Well, I know gravity is just true. 
like gravity is, it just is. And so what we're talking about is based on that truth, the truth of reality that just is. And I think that any of us who get away from this um, fantasy box, mind control box, programming box, and go sit outside and put our feet in the dirt and just look at the sky. If you sit there long enough, you will connect with the truth again on your own. You know, whatever that is, like you'll be able to feel it and hear it and see it and touch it. The fresh air and the soil and the, you know, the life. So that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. But okay, so now what? Now what? We've been mind controlled. We don't want to be mind controlled anymore. We want to take control of our lives. We see this chaos and this confusion in which the world is operating right now. And they're promoting fear because as long as they're promoting fear, you are going to be reacting. As long as you are operating in reactionary, you know, mode, that is the lowest level of thinking. It is the lowest level of thought. And we want you to operate on all your cylinders. So we want to be proactive. We're trying to get everybody ahead of it. We want you to know that someone like our, someone's trying to pillage our village because there's always somebody trying to pillage the village, you know, like back in the Viking days, you know, they would just go out and they thought they just had to go out and, you know, kill and steal because everybody was in this lack mindset. And that was the only way that they were going to get the reward, you know, so they were pillaging uh, towns and, and taking their wealth. And that was the only way for them to have that. And what I'm trying to say is everything is in abundance. Everything is naturally in abundance. None of us, all of us were born worthy and all of us are blessed. And there's just no reason for us to have to pillage each other's village because everybody has everything in abundance. You know, when you're not operating in this false system and we need to get everybody back onto the natural law system and you to go there from these modern government um, infrastructures it's a kind of a quantum leap so we want to tell you how you can step out of that and step back into natural law and the reason i want to tag here is because he is a free man he has done this tag how did you do it you know what's so funny about that? I get I get credit all the time about, you know, things like, man, that must have taken a lot of courage. But the fact is, I don't know that I'd have ever done it had I not been forced. And um, if that makes sense, you know, like I, because I was living this life, I guess let me just start right there. So previously, I was a executive for a whole bunch of financial holding companies. So we had companies all over the Midwest. Um, this company, I'd help them grow. I was the very first person that was ever hired. We grew to, well, the big company to about $150 million in assets. I had 900 employees all over the country. Um, I was living a great life. You know, I drove a Hummer. My wife drove a Beamer. Um, you know, and we were living that dream. I mean, my wife to this day has, you know, eight coach purses up in her closet that she never uses anymore. But anyway, you know, we, that, that consumertism life, I was in it and living a great life. You know, I mean, I had more free money at the end of the month than I had you know, bill money. And, and so it was good, but I got myself into a spot where they drew a line in the sand that I was unwilling to cross. And, uh, you know, they told me one day, long story short, I got an email from the CEO and he said, Hey, uh, uh, how do you feel about mandating the thing for everybody? And, um, I said, I'm not supportive. I won't comply. I'm not into this. And, uh, you know, I kind of hoped <clears throat> that it would go away, but unfortunately it did not. The next email I got said, we will now mandate it for everybody. And you have 30 days to get all 900 of them to comply. And um, so uh, I said, yes, sir, I'll get a meeting called. And I went home and I told my wife, baby, our life's about to change. <laughs> and um, so I, you know, went back, held the meeting, walked into the meeting. And it was so funny. It's like a, like it took, that time slows down so much for me because, you know, the CEO was patting me on the back, telling me about, you know, how I was making a good decision. And, you know, I was part of the team, and, you know, and I was thinking to myself, dude, this guy's in for such a huge surprise what I'm about to do to him. Like, he don't even know what's coming. And anyway, so I, I just, I basically got up in front of everybody and said, um, how many you know, people were in that meeting? Well, a lot of it was virtual, but in the meeting itself probably had 60 or 70. Wow. 
wow. but there were people from all over that were in it. And um, I just stood up and said, we will not be mandating anything. An employee has no ownership over its employees bodies and um, we're not doing it. And if you want the, if you want the thing, go get it. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. Live your life, be free. You know, freedom is being able to live your life according to your own terms. And to me, le leadership is not mandating how some, what somebody does with their body. So um, I don't care whether they wanted it or they didn't. But anyway, so um, I was escorted out of the building. That was the end of my career um, after 25 years. And so then what happened was I thought to myself, and this really gets to your point, Nevi, right here, is I thought to myself, I am never going to live this again. I am never going to put my life in a position to where everybody has control over me and that I'm a slave to the modern system that starts way back in school by putting us in square rooms and ringing a bell as we move from one you know station to the next station and i'm not doing this anymore i'm taking control of my own life so i took all my money out of the markets i sold everything that i owned i put it all together i bought a big piece of land i now live in a five thousand square foot beautiful home that's completely off grid i provide my own water my own food my own sewer my own heat my own energy my own everything i own it all i have no debt and i just told them to piss off basically sorry can i say that yeah. And, yes. and, and so I went and lived life according to my own terms. And um, that's what I did. did wow. that, that is amazing. <laughs> he's, he's not telling you he's, he's, he's very humble. That place that he walked away from, he created that. I did. Wow. It was, it was a company he created, he built. Yeah. And so, you know, like tags, no dummy. All right. And he's been like in the, uh, he, he's he's done all the things on the orthodox side. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not like he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of us were really good rule followers because we wanted to do a great job. Yes, we wanted to do a really good job and be the really good humans. And what we don't know, what we didn't know, what we're learning is how manipulated manipulated we were. Oh. And, and what free oh. you actually experience freedom mm -hmm. um it requires a lot of responsibility and at first yeah. there's there is a fear factor involved with it mm -hmm. because it's something unknown and i mean tag you guys i know you and your wife had to be terrified for at least a minute um yeah you know my uh I'm such a lucky guy in so many ways and I'm so blessed in so many ways. You know, my wife is my very best friend in the entire world. And if I'm going to get in trouble, she's the one I want by my side. And in fact, she'd be the one rooting me on. So for me, that part was fairly easy. You know, she looked me in the eyes and, you know, put her two hands on my face and said, I'll follow you anywhere. Yeah. And that was kind of the end of that, you know? And so, but yeah, it's still scary for me because again, I have to, you talked about something earlier that's super important. This is the thing people don't understand. And this is why most people don't want freedom. Yeah. Because freedom takes super accountability. You have to be willing to take care of everything for yourself. I mean, just like a light switch. You know how many people are behind the scenes to ensure your light switch comes on? Or behind the water faucet to ensure your water faucet comes on? Or, I mean, there's so many health. You know, it's so easy to just go run to the doctor. I mean, there's so many things that make it. We're the keyless entry culture, which is what I like to call it. Yeah. But we're. But I think what's important for people to know is in order to take it back, you have to understand where it comes from. You know, you got to understand natural law, Nithi, which I'm so glad you're spearheading this. But there's so much there's so much to that schooling, the way we're programmed from kindergarten to get up from a bell, sit down from a bell. To go the, from the bell. Yeah. In the womb, but, I mean, honestly, like I'll tell you the most difficult part of this conversation is that people think that I'm coming after their faith. And. You know, I, I have this place called a food church and people can't stand it because they're just like, you know, what kind of religion is she trying to suck us up into? And I'm like, you know, this is not about your belief system. This is not about your belief system. You know, people say to me, well, yeah, you know, I'm fine because I don't I just don't believe that. OK, well, that is your belief in natural law is not changing the natural law. Right. <laughs> Whether you believe in gravity or you don't believe in gravity, gravity is happening. And that isn't Neethi's opinion or Emily's opinion or Tag's opinion. It is just going to happen no matter what. So if you don't want to go off the edge of the cliff and fall down and die, it doesn't matter whether you believe that's going to happen or not. That's what's going to happen. 
And so in the same way, when you're thinking negative thoughts, when you're thinking, I can't do this, when you're thinking, um, who, who's, who's responsible for this? Because you always are looking for blame. You know, we, they've created this society of blamers. Mm-hmm. Somebody's at fault. Who's at fault? And every time that you say something, if I say something to somebody like, hey, where did, you know, where did my, my red pen go? Everybody's ready to blame somebody because <laughs> nobody wants to be responsible for where to meet these red pen go. <laughs> and meantime, I'm just literally looking for the red pen. Like it's not, a, I don't care. I just want to know where is it? Can I get another red pen? Like, you know, um, but the immediate programming that they've done to everybody is that, you know, oh, it, I'm not responsible for that red pen. And I didn't take it. I didn't lose it. How about just, how about have grace? Can you care about me? enough to feel like, hey, Nithi just needs a red pen. Can we help her find a red pen? I mean, is that awful if you just, so this is the thing that's missing everybody is the generative principle. It's one of the most important principles of natural law, which is to uh, care, to generate the action. This is the masculine action um, principle. It's a masculine principle. And, you know, we've emasculated all of society, we've emasculated men. um, And everybody should wonder why that's happening because we do not want, when I say we, I mean, people, people out there, you know, um, don't, there, there, again, there's, there's been this divide and conquer and religion was one of the divisive tools that Mm -hmm. was used Religion is one of, because listen, we're all liquid love. We're all liquid love. I think in every faith, whatever your faith is, I don't think that in your faith, you believe that you are supposed to hate another human being. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't know what faith is out there. What, what faith of, you know, is out there going, I need to hate other people. I don't, I don't think there's any of any faith like that. And I don't want to go through all of the different beliefs because it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That requires belief. That requires your belief. Anything that requires your belief means somebody was trying to talk you in or out of that. We're not here trying to talk you guys in or out of anything. We're trying to shine a light on the truth so that you can be free. Remember, I think also this is written in almost every religion is Knowledge of the truth shall set you free. The misunderstanding is when they say truth, the truth shall set you free. The truth isn't what's going to set you free. Knowledge of the truth will set you free. What do you think, Emily? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that that was the hard part for me was to hear it. Um, because, uh, it was just like my, my ears were just like filled with cotton and, and it was just like, you would say certain things and I would just be like listening and listening and listening. And then I would just be like, ah, like, no, that's against what I've been told. And then I started looking at you for, cause for me, it, it came from a person. It had to come from a person. And so my brain was able to go, Nidhi is loving you. Nidhi loves you. So listen to the love. And so then I would listen to the love and I would be like, okay, well, it doesn't make sense to me that this person who loves me so deeply and cares about my well-being would be saying something that didn't resonate with my programming. And so then I was able to take bit by bit because talking to you, Nidhi, is like drinking from a fire hose. I mean, there's just no way that I could absorb all of it at all. Um, And I it's still that way. But it's like over the years, I've been able to get this little piece and go, oh, I believe this. I know this. I see this. I can touch this. I can feel this. I can absorb this into my experience. And every single thing you've taught me has been 
right has been has has been fruitful um and has literally transformed my life so it was going to the the like the micro steps that i had to do if i just went okay i'm going to absorb everything that needy is saying my my brain would explode like i can't i can't do that yeah. but i can take these tiny little things and then take it back to my village i can take it back to my husband and go hey needy said this what do you think i don't know let's look at this hey needy wrote this book let's read this book together and then that was that was the big thing for my husband he read the book and he was just like oh my goodness and then he was like what what kind of mascara are you using what kind of eyeliner are you using and i was like what is my husband asking me this like, it's just crazy and he's like there might be toxins in that we need to get that away from your eyes and i'm just like okay okay so it was it was a gradual process and i think sometimes when people stand underneath the waterfall they're just like ah can't but you just got to take it a, a little bit take a little bit at a time and i'm sure tags experience you know it was a learning process it wasn't overnight that he was just no. like i know how to sustain life no i'm still learning <laughs> how did you how did you become free how did you become free because emily's saying that this took a long time i just want also everybody she's also very humble she made dramatic the, what she's saying is that what I'm saying to you is going to, like, I'm asking everyone to take, make a quantum leap. I understand that. I, I understand that. And, and, and that's the reason why I just quietly just keep repeating and shining the light constantly, constantly, constantly. And whatever she's saying is, is true, but she also went from living in a camper to running her own business um and only eating regenerative meat and she did that since i met her in uh, 2019 yeah fall of 2019 so it's 2022 she's freaking badass okay because she has climbed out of the pits from hell and look at where she's at it's incredible and i mean i can't take any credit for that she did all of that every bit of that she did that and you know, but no one else was telling me the things that you tell me, maybe no one else was telling me that I was worthy when I was living in a camper on food stamps, you know, no, but no one else was telling me these things. And when you did, it was just like my, my spirit just went, Oh, what, what? Because my spirit resonated with what you said. It wasn't that you know, needy is this, you know, a uh, really persuasive, you know, speaker and like, so magical and amazing. It was the truth that was inside me saw the truth that was inside you and went, Oh, okay. Yes. I can absorb that. I can, I can, uh, you know, really walk in that. It was easy. If you said something that doesn't, didn't resonate with me, I would have just been like later crazy whatever people do say that to me too so it's like <laughs> but you know i think that we all kind of view the um i'll call it i'll call it an assault on our orthodox programming um as crazy until until they can't they they're just like wait a minute because they can't unhear us yeah they, unsee this conversation like i'm so excited to put this out there today because i you know maybe nobody's here right now like i get blocked blocked and banished and whatever but people seem to find me somehow mm -hmm. you know eventually they find it and i'm just like i'm just gonna keep putting it out there into the universe somewhere and hopefully they're gonna like latch onto it you know and find it but um so anyway well, what I wanted to say though, that, Emily. one thing that was, that's really gotten to the point now for me is at first, I, I wish I had the artistic ability to like draw this or make a cartoon, but it was like, you, you took my fortress and you started just crumbling this facade. And, mm -hmm. and at first it, it was uncomfortable. It was, it, it felt like scary and vulnerable. And now I'm like, what else can we demolish? <laughs> like, what else can we tear down? Because I know that what is true <laughs> is so 
so much more beautiful than that fortress that I had that was a facade. It was so fake. It was, it wasn't reality. And so now I'm just, I'm, I'm excited about the transition. I know it's going to hurt. I know it's going to suck. I know it's going to be difficult, but I'm ready. Wait, are you, is your life sucking? No, I'm just saying that I, I know that there's, there's, uh, growing pains. You well, know? you've been through a lot of pain. You've been through a lot of pain, but I think it was delicious. It was. I mean, there it was. It was hard. There were some moments that that were definitely hard, but I was able to do the hard things. And I think that's the exciting thing is to go. I did that. I bet you I can do more. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Tag. Tag. Yeah. Has been like that. <laughs> There's so, so much to all of this, you know, I think, well, first of all, I, you know, I tell my wife this all the time and I've told a lot of people this love is easy. It's the easiest thing there is because if you truly give a shit, if you truly care, it's not hard. I, my wife asks me to do things, guys, I'm going to tell you to me are ridiculous, but I don't care because I love her. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Right. Um, but I, I think the step to being free, I think the mo single most important thing is just becoming aware. Just understanding the powers that are out there and how they're waging war against us and our children. And they're doing it every single day. Our food, right? Our supply chain. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on and on. This is a huge, complex topic, but um, they absolutely wage war every day. And as soon as you become aware, like for me now, I recognize it 100 miles away. I walk into my, my county commissioner's office and, man, they can say two words and I will shut that shit down because I can sense it. Like it's in my blood. It's coming out my, you know, <laughs> pores in my body. Um and so I think becoming aware, everything after becoming aware, I think is a side effect of becoming aware. You know, it's just, it's what you do because you take it seriously. Like, oh, really? Well, that's interesting. The Carnegie family is what created the public school systems. Really? The Rockefellers really are the ones that created modern medicine and the way that that all works? Really? So these four or five, fam I mean, and you start getting it and then out your pores it comes and then you're like, I should have never watched that video. <laughs> I mean, but also it's irrelevant. Like who cares that they did that? Right. Like here's the thing is when you're where, where, where we are with what we're doing and I'm not even a hundred percent where I want to be. And I know Emily's not a hundred percent where she wants to be. Mm -hmm. Like we know we're still in our process of, of walking in that direction or moving in that direction. But, and I mean, tag isn't either. Like if y'all think tags are done. Oh <laughs> you know, no, I'm just really know him very well. But like, <laughs> this is, there's big things happening, mm -hmm. but, but what I'll say is that now that we have started to move in truth, does it even matter what these other people did or whatever? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we could sit around and be hating them and you know, whatever. I personally don't want to waste a single ounce of my energy. <laughs> thing about them anymore. I just want to move towards what we're doing. So this is that piece where I say to folks, you know, like, all right, once you understand the truth, once you have the knowledge, you don't have to waste any more time and blame and suffering and nonsense. Like you just don't have to do that anymore. You just, I, I feel like every day I'm just, I'm so excited to get out of bed because something freaking incredible is going to happen today. Even if all I did was make my bed, you know, and then lay back down again because, because it's a day that I just need to chill or something, you know, I'm so excited. What do you guys think? What do you think? Absolutely. And um, for me, uh, I can have my, my schedule for the day. And my favorite thing is whenever uh, like, something cancels and then I'm like, Ooh, what's going to happen? Cause I know that something's going to fill in that, that block of time. Um, and, and I am literally seeing miracles happen every day. I mean, it is just baffling me, the miracles that are happening in my family, in myself, in my business, in, in my, in my friends lives in, in my clients lives. And I think it's because I'm looking I think it's because I'm, I'm, my eyes are open and I'm like, oh, where's the next miracle coming? You're caring. Tag is caring. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the thing until we care, 
about what's going to happen to the other people. Listen, everybody out there is like, what do we have to do in America for America for America for America? Okay, no. What what are we going to do to free the whole freaking world? We have to be concerned and thinking about how are we going to unfold and unravel the chaos for every human being on the planet. So like, okay, yeah, America becomes free. America becomes independent. We're all radically self-reliant. First of all, I don't want to be just radically self-reliant all the time. I want to be able to lean on Tag or lean on Emily or lean on somebody to just have this conversation, even if nothing else. Okay. But like, we want and need each other. We need to work together. We need to complement each other. There's things I like to do that is not what Emily likes to do. That's not what Tag likes to do. But we all need that thing to be done, whatever that thing is. And in the comments right now, I got Big Kid 71 saying, do any of you actually think getting to 100% is possible? They say they do not. I do not either. We're This is an expansive universe. This is an expansive life. We are all expanding. We are never regressing. We're only expanding. So we're only going to get bigger and better and more powerful. And you don't even know your full power yet. You don't even know what it is yet. Yeah, I think to a uh, big kid's point, I think what he's at, at least how I interpret his question is getting 100% free. Is it even possible? And, and I think that's what he's saying. And yeah, oh, the answer it's to me. And if that's the question, big kid, um, the answer is also no. Um, but a couple to your points earlier, Neethi, real quick, is that this is why I built Freesteading yes. is because I can't do it alone. And no matter how much efforts I put into it, I can't. And so the goal is to get as many like minded people together so that we can offer real change. You know, to the point of why does it matter? The Carnegie's and all these names that I brought up, it doesn't so much matter what they did. What it matters is that I understand the game because then I can combat the game. And I'm going to give you an example. So um, my child comes home from the school or from the box or from whatever it is you want to call it. I'm, I think every parent in America, what they should be doing is pushing that child to be creative and to come up with their own plan and their own game and giving them a little bit of control and letting them explore what makes them so wonderful instead of being into common core. Right. And so understanding the game that's being played, I think helps us combat it better, which I th was to my point, but to big kids point, we rely on so many things out there. I don't think you can ever be totally self-sufficient. I think, with the right community, maybe the community could be, but alone you cannot be. Not Who wants to be alone anyway? Nobody. That is not what we are. We are liquid love. Mm -hmm. We're liquid love, looking for a place to happen. And we, there. This is this life is supposed to be about no rulers and no masters. No rulers and no masters. That is, by the way, what anarchy is. That is not the way that they want people to receive that word because there's mm -hmm. this linguistics theft going on and they're changing the definition. I want everybody to start thinking about the language more carefully. Like for example, mandate doesn't mean legally Correct. you're required to do anything. Okay. What it means is this is a suggestion for you to participate voluntarily in some nonsense that we want you to do. Okay. So the other thing I want to talk about today, first, I want y'all to be paying attention to the little tickers going on. So I said, we have to take responsibility for our thoughts. Sovereignty is from within ourselves. People say to me, hey, Neethi, how do you run this food church? You know, like, what's the class on the food church? And, you know, how do you do this? Well, it's not a business structure, people. This is me expressing myself 100% based on whatever I feel like. This is... This is me being free and requiring you to be responsible also in this exchange with me. That requires courage and bravery. That requires me to defend this space. That requires me to tell other people, no, you're not going to get what you want this way, including the regulators that have no reason to be regulating in the way that they are. You know, but that's that's like a bigger conversation what i i'm expecting people to make a quantum leap but you can't just do that all the time as evidenced by the steps that emily and tag and i are taking we are doing things methodically intentionally deliberately walking towards this infinite 
expansion. <laughs> Right. So as we're doing that, as we're like, there's no, there's no deadline. There's no list. There's no, we're never going to get it done. We're never going to get it done. So we're just trying to move the energy in that direction, build the momentum for everyone to experience actually real freedom. And Yes. And we're, we're right on time. Yes. We're right on time. This is exactly where we're supposed to be right now. And nobody is behind. We're just, they just haven't had the, com they haven't crossed paths with the truth. They haven't crossed paths with um, what will transform their experience. And, and so that helped me a lot because I just, I, I got into this like judgy mode at first. And I was just like, why doesn't anybody see this <laughs> once I saw it? And then I was just like, wait, I, that was me five years ago. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. totally me five years ago. It's just not their time to see it. And then whenever it is their time to see it, then, you know, that's, that's what's so beautiful about community is mm -hmm. that um, like, here's my favorite thing. My favorite thing is this, this dream that I have of going and really uh, going into the, the, the most mentally ill people, the people that are the throwaway people of society like this. Think about the schizophrenics who are like living in a tent underneath the highway, mm -hmm. um, you know, like drawing in blood on the concrete, like the great, like there, there's nothing worthy of them for society. Wouldn't it be amazing? All that untapped resource of brilliance whenever those people's minds get right. Oh my goodness. That's what's going to be so cool is to realize that we all have value and we all are going to be able to contribute to this community um, forever. Like it, it's just, it's absolutely endless. Emily, you you glow when you talk about that. Uh, it's so fun. I can't wait. Like, I just, I can't wait to just watch people get set free, you know, and, and to be a part of that, you know, to be a part of that love, to not go in there and go, you're mentally ill and you're broken and you, you know, you need to be fixed. No, to go in there and go, hey, you're, 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 you're brilliant. You're amazing. We need you come here, come here. You know, it's just, it's, it's my life's desire for sure to set yeah. people free. Yeah. That's, that's the work, everybody. That mm -hmm. is the work. The work is, you know, like people say to me too, they're, they're always like, you know, well, what about this person and that person? And I'm like, it is not my work to save people. It is not my work to save people. It is my work to shine a light on truth. And I love them. <clears throat> love everybody where they're at. And just, you know, be a constant beacon for the path. You know, that's that's all any of us can be. And you also have to be ready and, you know, willing to accept that some people are never going to do this because they don't want to. It's both scary. Well, they're not wrong for whatever it is that they want mm -hmm. also. And, you know, is, are they going to be um, successful? Well, what does that mean? You know, like, I guess that they're successful with whatever it is that they wanted. You know, you know, Neethi tonight at uh, here a little bit later, I have another live I'm going to do with grumpy acres. And we're going to talk about, we've been doing this series on the 28 principles of Liberty mm. and we have the last one tonight, which is the, the 28th principle, which talks about how America was supposed to be this light in the world, you know, and it was supposed to be this gleaming place in the world. And I hope he's not watching because I don't want him to know what I'm going to talk about. But I'm going to talk more about how it's really not about America. It's about Americans. It's about leading by example, as big kids said. It's about sharing love, sharing light. It's about sharing commitment. It's about saying to somebody the things they don't really want to hear being a true friend, you know, it's about those things that make what America was supposed to be, you know, into what it is. So I'm pretty excited about that. You it's don't know. What's coming. Yeah. 
I think that I think that um, the when you're leading by example, the biggest thing that uh, helps folks is that they can they can see that it's possible, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. You know, like I don't know how many people thought that. Emily was dealing with mental illness and MS. I had three autoimmune conditions that were going on that people don't even know about, you know? Um, and, and there's so many things that are not visible, you know, like whatever you were experiencing tag, it wasn't like anybody could see that in you. It wasn't like you had crutches or something visible for someone to see. You know what, guys, that's the other thing about natural law is the things that we're talking about are unseen truths, unseen truths. Like you can see this. That's gravity. The consequence of gravity, like right now, immediately. You see how fast that was? That is how fast the consequences for natural law are. There's not a judgment day that's coming at the end of your life, guys. That's the that's the programming training lie that's a lie you are being judged by nature by natural law every second that fast just that fast like that is how fast your consequence has arrived whatever your negative consequence for your action or positive consequence for your action it happens that fast have you ever paid attention you know when we lost mina guys then we went to the beach for a week And I remember staring at the waves and I was angry. I was angry at the waves because they kept coming. And I was like, my daughter just died. Can you just stop? Can you just stop for a minute? No. No. Life just does not stop. That is the speed of life. And I spent the rest of that week being mad and grieving that and yelling at the ocean. And then finally, I was like, I have to get on this rhythm this is this is the speed of life at which i have to get back on track with and it sucked that was that painful thing that emily's talking about like you have to do things that you cannot or don't want to handle or be responsible for or manage or whatever it is and every day i have to remind myself about those waves It's the reason I have to be near an ocean because I got to be able to go and center myself. I do that back to those waves all the time. And I have to tell myself, like, this is the speed at which, you know, or sometimes I'll go find a creek and just sit by the water and watch the creek running. And that is the speed at which things are moving. And I better just get on board or get off. I mean, all right, I can't get off. Can't get off. It's not like you're at Disney World in Fantasy Island land. And you can get, they can't stop the ride. This, this ride of life, you can't stop it. It is just going. And so you better just get, get on board, you know, get your mind right. And, you know, realize what's happening, whether you like it or not. Like, that's the point. That's the point. This, I can't, I don't have to believe in the waves. They just kept coming. I don't have to believe in the sun. It just keeps rising every day. And also, isn't that a miracle? Like the sun comes up every day. Mm -hmm. Every day, it keeps coming, no matter what we do. That's that's what's glorious, right? That's the that's like wow! (laughs) Look at this miracle. That's why the birds are singing so joyfully in the morning. They're so excited. Like, do you listen in the morning? I don't care where you live. You hear all that energy from all the living beasts of the planet that are just going crazy. Like, Oh my God, the sun came back up again. Did you see, did you see it? Maybe there's a lesson in all of that. You know, maybe we take ourselves too seriously. Maybe the world judges too much. Maybe we, you know, compete too much. Maybe all of these things go on and the sun is a constant everyday lesson that, uh, you know, that you're not that great. You're not that special. And, you know, um, you know, maybe there's a big lesson in all of that. Nithi, I was going to tell you too, by the way, you know, I was thinking earlier today as I knew I was coming on to do this show and I was thinking about natural law and it got me thinking back to this, you know, some of the stuff that I went through and, the, you know, the the law of self-preservation, right, or the law of survival, right? And that um, those laws kicking in when all of that happened to me that made me, you know, stick a stake in the ground and say, here, charge, 
you know, because I didn't have a choice anymore, you know, and, and um, so you were in my head all morning. I thought you'd like to know that. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but. <laughs> oh man, you let me know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Actually, uh, Neethi B watches you all the time. She watches every one of your shows. Uh, I can't wait to meet her. I hope that we get to meet each other next trip. Like, yeah. you know, she would be a great one to talk about, you know, natural remedies. And I mean, she does, we live by that. Wow. Yeah. We live by it. You know, my wife makes everything. Well, everything. you have to, because you're radically self-reliant. This is what we're talking about. This is yeah. what we're talking about. And so, you know, everybody has their homesteading channels and all these things, which is wonderful, but people aren't talking about the elephant in the room. Okay. Before we go, I want to introduce one more principle. One more. This isn't a principle. I want to introduce another truth that people aren't aware of. Are we ready? All right. Check that banner out. If you want to take action today to do something really big, if you want to do, if you want to actually do something, people don't know what to do. They're like, you know, okay, we're supposed to be we the people. Okay, you know, what does that even mean? If you're interested, I want you to go to the link in the ticker. Go to the ticker. Go to that link. It's AmericanStateNationals.org. The Oath Keepers have already risen. When you go to that website, then at the top left, there's a video, which is an introduction. Mm -hmm. I asked Emily and Tag to watch it today. What did you guys think? Did you see it? Yes, I did. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i big about sovereignty and I'm big about those kind of things. Now, I'm not super familiar with this exact movement. I want to go do some more research, you know, which I, I watched it just prior to this video. So I will go educate myself on it because that's just a huge piece of it. But um, on the surface, what I read, I'm super supportive, um, you know, of it. So I was excited to watch it, actually. I know this is a judge. She is a judge mm -hmm. there. She, her family, she is a descendant of one of the most wealthiest families that put money away to ensure the freedom of America. So the more you start to learn about her, you're going to be like, what? And, um, and we're, I'm still learning a lot more about it too. And I want everyone to learn a little bit about it, but one of the things that people need to know, the knowledge that we're revealing today is that you are not, um, you're not free and protected and being able to operate under the United States Constitution as it was intended by our founders. Okay. Because America was, was incorporated and, and actually it's split into three pieces that people don't know about three corporate entities that people do not know about. Americans don't know this. They don't know that they were sold as slaves. Mm -hmm. You don't know that you're a slave. In fact, if the American, even, even if the black slaves were alive today, they would tell you they didn't know they were slaves. My family, we come from, you know, um, India. We were under British Indian, you know, rule for, 400 years. My mom was born a slave and she will never tell you that. She will never admit it. She will tell you you're crazy, you know, because she was free to live her life and do whatever she wanted to do, but not really. Just like we're not really. We have to have permission to drive a car. We have to have a driver's license. We have to have permission to get married. We have to have a marriage license. You have to have permission, 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 permission for all these things. And then you're, you know, and everybody's like, oh, well, that's civilized. That's civilized. You have to operate with some civility. Otherwise, you know, we would have chaos and confusion. Um, no, what you don't know is that if everybody is abundantly supporting each other for free, then there's no pecking order. You can, you can learn this by observing a flock of chickens. If you put a flock of chickens together and you free feed 
them, which I've had this discussion with Emily before. So if you want to watch one of the previous videos, you can do that. But like I was saying that when you observe the birds, when you free feed them and they have everything in abundance, they have fresh grass, they have fresh food, they have fresh air, they have clean sunshine, they have everything, they have water in abundance all the time then they all eat when they need to. They do whatever they're going to do. They love each other. They're just fine. There's no birds killing each other. There's no mortality. When you start feeding them on a schedule, when you start limiting the amount of water they have, when you start shifting how you're going to allow them to get sun and light and, you know, grass and whatever, all of a sudden they're hoarding. There's a pecking order. They're killing each other. The mortality goes up. Some of them just get sick and die because they just can't handle the stress of not knowing when the food's coming or whatever. So this is the way that we are also operating. They make us believe that we need these structures to not kill each other or whatever. But it's not true. It's, it's part of the lie. So you could probably just marinate on that until next week. And then next week we'll be back with a new conversation for another little bite of this. But I wanted you to, to meet Tag. I wanted you to know about what Emily's doing. And then we're going to continue to have these conversations in Tag. If you can join us any of the next several Thursdays around noon and we go live, I'd love to have you back anytime that you can join. Bring B if you want. Let her jump in if you can't come whatever. I want to continue this conversation for, you know, for whoever it is that's out there seeking the truth. I want you to hear it from all of us in different ways because it isn't just my truth. You know, Anitha, you'd actually, uh, B would be a great one to have these conversations with. Um, you know, I was, a. Uh... I have to admit to you a tiny bit intimidated coming on here today, um, even though, you know, I do videos all the time and I publicly speak all the time. But you're really getting into um, topics here when you're talking about natural. I'm trying to catch up, but it's my programming is in a different way. You know, the way that I just like the difference in language. Right. When, when you talk about, you know, fantasy versus programming and, you know, just all that. It's good to a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I've had a lot of fun and I can make it most of the time. It's just hard to tell what three weeks from now on a Thursday, I might be in Washington, D.C. or who knows, you know, who knows what's going on in my life. But um, but yeah, so super cool. And I was, you know, I'm super, super glad to be here. Well, thank you for making time for us today. And Emily, thank you for making time to be here and sharing everything as well. And and hey, friends, I hope that you guys all got something out of this conversation. I look forward to, you know, any of you who are going to watch the replay and, you know, like just let us know your questions, what you thought about it. Um, join us every Thursday at noon. Hopefully all the powers that be will allow it to <laughs> be seen and be out there. Huh? Eastern time. Eastern standard time at noon. Yes. Cool. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate everybody there. Uh, thank you, everybody on Instagram. And let me just let you know that we are I am going to post this so everybody will actually uh, be able to see it. And one of the other points in the comments was citizenship. I do want you to know that if you are a citizen, citizen means slave. That's what the word citizen means. Look up the legal term for citizen. Like, look, look these words up. It's important to know language. Okay. So I'm going to stop my live on here. You know, one of my favorite quotes in life is living well is the best revenge. Ooh, Ooh that one is my good. favorite ones. And um, you know, I try to tell people all the time to live well. So I got to do, you ain't got to talk. All you got to do is live well. Speak for itself. That's right. Hmm. And morality isn't what we thought it was. No, no. Morality isn't what we thought it was. When you are in conflict with yourself, you are operating in immorality. That means that when you're walking down the street and you don't agree with the masks or the jabs or the whatever, and you do it anyway, because you don't want to face the conflict, that is 100% immoral. All right, guys, we love you so much. We'll see you next time.